and welcome to another edition of Game Guru Live, live, live Twitch broadcast. I'm your host, Lee Bamba, and this is Game Guru, the easiest game maker on the planet. As is my custom, these broadcasts go out live, unrehearsed, unscripted, completely made up as we go along, and involves a live studio audience who can ask questions at any time and derail my entire presentation, which makes it a lot more fun. So, if you are joining me live, please ask your questions. We have 30 minutes. Scratch that. We have 27 minutes, because I let the intro go on for a couple of minutes, just in case Twitch puts a great big advertisement at the start of the video, cutting off the first 60 seconds of my rambling. Now, I'm going to go once again into the forum post, which asks people to talk about uh, suggestions on what you want me to cover in these live broadcasts. I have something that I can cover, because I've been working on it. i just give you a little background as to where I have been and what I have done. Uh, I have glued two days together. I have glued yesterday to today, and uh, in short speak, that means I've not actually gone to sleep. I've just worked all the way through from yesterday through to today, because I was working on something really important. I thought it was a small five-hour job. It turned out to be a slightly larger 25-hour job, but it needed all to be done in one go, and now it's done, and I'd like to demonstrate that because I think it's pretty cool and you think wow you've actually done all this really cool stuff but before I indulge in that because you know I might keep my powder dry and just reveal it to you when version 1.14 goes out and then you'll be even more surprised at all the wonderful things or maybe in the dev uh, blog so you can learn about it there but I want to give priority to people who've ma made some suggestions now um, Lord Julian and one other poster got the request last week. So what I'm going to look for is requests from somebody else um, along the lines of an earlier of Game Guru that we haven't previously covered in a broadcast and I can shed a little bit more light by diving into that, that particular feature or subject. So, I think the one in the lighter colour is the new ones, but I'm just going to look at the today's date, 23rd, and then I'm going to roll back 7 days, which is the 16th, 13th, 15, 15, um, mm, 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 there it is, that's the first one, TGPEG. I think a broadcast where you painstakingly write cube map environment reflection mapping into the entity basic shader slow enough that I can write it into the shader at the same time would be excellent. I love the shiny shiny. <laughs> you want me to write cube mapping in the next 25 minutes properly into the shader system? Hmm. Yes, I could hack something in that works within 25 minutes, but whether it's something we can use and whether I can go slow enough to actually allow you to keep up, that's another question. But I like the idea. I think um, we spend so much time watching me in Lua script, you've probably never seen me in the shader script, which is it's a script, it's HLSL, but it's still a script um, with code and more along the lines of C rather than Lua, but yeah, I suppose it's a pretty good idea. So I'll hold that in reserve. I think we can do something along the lines of cube map, but not necessarily the entire finished version because that's probably further down in the voting board. I don't really want to um uh Lord Julian another request blah, blah 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 I'll probably come back to a Lord Julian request if there's nobody else who's actually posting but I want to give everyone an opportunity in the community to have an idea and post it um so I'm not just doing a, a broadcast to a small handful of of fanatics <laughs> Much appreciated, Fanatics, you understand, but Fanatics nonetheless. Rage Quit Kingdom. Can you do a live stream on character exporting and animation calling? Nothing too hardcore, just like a flickering light or a door that cracks open to attract the player for a good jump scare. No meaning to rage. Facts are facts. These people want their own custom chairs and animations in the game, not a zombie that takes a solid three seconds swing. Game Guru has a huge potential if you show them how to use it. 
I agree with the last two sentences, absolutely. Huge much potential, and all it takes is the knowledge to exploit it. But importing characters and creating animations, that's well beyond my purview. I'm not a 3D modeler or a texturer or an animator for that matter. Um, and the the recipe for importing characters with animations and textures is pretty well documented, but mostly bits and bobs within the forum because it's a skill. It really is a skill. I couldn't do it in the next 10 min uh, 20 minutes. Uh, but then it goes on to say a flickering light or a door that cracks open to attract the player for a good jump scare. That's not really character exporting or importing or animation. That could really just be a small script just to flicker a light because you can actually switch the, a dynamic light on and off in a flickery sort of way. I kind of re vaguely remember doing that in a pre previous broadcast, and there's now over 50 broadcasts, so go back in time and have a look for the flickering light um, broadcast. I think we did that. But for bringing in your own custom characters and animations, I'll tell you what, we'll hold off on that, because once we've improved the FBX importing, then that whole broadcast will be so much easier. You'll just go into one tool, knock out an animation, Spit it as an FBX, import it into Game Guru, and it'll work almost first time. So we'll hold off on that until we've got our FBX skinning system in place. Uh, Jerry Tremble comments on the uh, exporting an animation. Sounds great. Even though I personally have it pretty much down. Lord of the Rings. Da -da -da -da. So yeah, there's lots of people out there that's already done it. You have some expertise on it. It'd be great if actually they did a Twitch broadcast. Because <laughs> they probably know a lot more than me. He kind of blunders his way through. And gets constantly surprised when people are dragging in models from all sorts of places into Game Guru. So uh, there's probably more information out there in the forums rather than in my uh, live Twitch broadcast Watter. I do question your idea of character exporting, blah, blah, blah. And I think it's along the lines that uh, it's pretty much OTT for what most people are going to want to learn about in these rather simple and short Game Guru broadcasts. But, you know, if that's the last thing and we add in the FBX skinning importer, yeah, we'll definitely jump all over that. Oh, and this looks like the last one, which was posted today from uh, Bellidos. I assume that when you say exporting, mean the point of creating character, external program, up to the point where you import into Game Guru. The problem with that is. Blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so there's two people agreeing with me that it's a lot of stuff to actually cram into a broadcast. And that is the end of it. What I would like to see in a Twitch broadcast is an explanation of the .fpe command specifically. What each of the CSI slots are for and how they interact with scripts after creating characters matching the CSI animation is probably the most time consuming and confusing aspect. And then the rest is in a bracket. For example, I found if you don't add at least an idle animation into the unarmed punch and kick slots, then it messes up the death animation and leaves them standing when dead. You know what? This last bit, in the very last post, feeds in to the thing I wanted to talk about this week, simply because I've just done 20 odd hours and my mind is full of it. And it'd be great to sort of output it into this uh, broadcast so you can um, get a really good insight into A, what I've done, and B, all the new stuff I've had to do, and C, responding to this bit I've just highlighted now, which is about... How does the FPE start describing animations? Um, does, where, when does the lower script take over? And what's the relationship between the two? So that's a pretty good one. And I guess it kind of, sort of, eases us into Rage Quick Kingdom's request, which is, can we see a little bit more about animation and, and stuff like that? Which is the door that opens a crack and all that kind of thing. So I'm thinking the general consensus from the last week... Um, about this and I can inject what I've actually been working on which I really want to talk to about so I'm going to do that but before I do that I'm just going to glance over to the live questions to see if anyone says no Lee don't talk about that um, Nathan L38 says I am a trooper because I've worked for 25 hours solid uh, I used to work a lot longer than that back in my youth but I'm getting old and sensible and wise now so I think uh, gluing two days together is maximum 
I used to be able to glue three or four days together, but start to see strange shapes crawling up the walls. So it's probably not a good idea I actually mention that, just in case people think, oh, that's a good idea, and I shall do that. Because <laughs> you'd probably go psychotic. Um, Synchro Mesh says, I still think adding music sounds to menus is more doable in 30 minutes. Well, I'll tell you what, look at we are. We're at um, 4.12, we've got 17 minutes. Let's do both. I'm going to show you how to add music into your menu and then I'm going to show you with whatever time remains the animation, the FPE and the shader stuff that I've been working on. So without further ado you're probably going to want to know well where do you start to add some music into your game. Well if you go into Game Guru Files, Title Bank and then Default you have a series of Lua scripts. Each of these scripts controls a different page in your standalone executable. And the one you'll probably be interested in is title.lua. Now title.lua is the first page you see. And you see in the init it's going to load up all the previous settings. And then it's going to load in some resources, quite a lot of resources. And then the title main is your loop, which is going to go round and round and round, which controls the detection of whether you're hovering over a button. And I've covered this in a previous broadcast so I won't dwell on it now but what I will do is introduce a couple of more commands inside the init which shows you how to play your own music. Now anyone that followed the previous couple of broadcasts will have found out that we added a, a new command in version 1.131 which had something to do with load global sounds. I've inserted the documentation here at the bottom of global.lua and it goes as follows, load global sound with a file name and an index and then you can loop said sound so it can actually play over and over and those are actually the only two commands that we need so before I do any of that what I want to do is make sure I'm not going to mess up um, this installation because it's always a good idea after my broadcast to put everything back so I've not permanently messed something up so I'm going to make a copy of the title so I can mess about with this title screen all I want and again I'm just going to copy that one and that last one Luke Global Sound you're going to put in the title in it let's do it at the top why not load my music these are the only two commands I want so the first one is to load the sound so we want a file name and we'll put it into one now don't worry about well what's that one is that going to overwrite anything no these are global sounds with their own global indexes. Now they are absolute, they are global, so one will permeate um, the title system and if you're in the game it erases it all and load global sound will load in global sounds into the in-game level. And then if you change the level again you've got a whole new set of global sounds. So that should, hopefully should describe the confinement of this index so we can load it and loop it it's as simple as that now the next big question is well uh, where do we get this sound from well as you can see below we uh, have a root which is titles bank so you're looking at a root of the files folder so we just want some music now so if we go into audio bank music plenty to choose from um, the escape yeah we've got some nice music in here uh, in OG format. Now, load global sound. I'm wondering whether that actually supports OG. I think it does. I think it does. So, what I'll do, I'll just take this entire path, Audio Bank Music The Escape, pop that into here. Remember, because you're in Lua, you need to define the uh, backslash with a double backslash because a single backslash will start to suggest you want to do some sort of special character and pick any sort of music. We'll just go find the OG. Why did I pick it? Because it was the biggest. So I presume it's the most interesting. So in theory, and I say in theory because again this is unrehearsed, I'm just popping it in, seeing what happens. When my uh, standalone runs title.init, it will load this and put it in one, then I can play, well, like a loop that sound over and over again for as long as this title screen is running. And just to make sure that we don't interfere with anything, there's a one at the end called title free. And maybe we can put in a new stop zones. 
that sounds is a bit crude. Let's just say what it is. Music. So then you can guess what that one is. Stop Global Sound 1. Save. Now in theory that should play this AUG file when we run a standalone. But we don't have a standalone, do we? So let's sort that bit out. We're going to Steam, Launch Game Guru. You'll notice it's still version 1.131. This is not an internal version 1.14. This is the version you've got right now. But with a slightly modified title.lua script. So I'm going to create a simple level. So I start here. I end the game here. So that's my start marker. And then I win the game if I get inside this circle. Extremely complicated game. And a path. Just so we know which direction to go. And maybe we'll put this on a slight hill. And put this one in a slight dip. Some water. But we won't dwell on that. But what we are going to do is save my level. So that saves that level out. And then almost immediately we're going to go save standalone. Now the... Remember the titles bank slash default slash titles dot lower? Um, it picks that by default. So that's the one it's going to use. So now it's created the standalone executable. Now we're going to go and see where we've got it. So there it is, my level. Now before we run it, I'm just going to double check that the titles bank default and the thing that we changed is correct. So if we go down, there it is. Title.lua, as you can see, we've got audio bank music, the escape file.org. Now, what you might find doesn't exist is the actual music file. Music, the escape, well, that's very clever of me. So it's actually included final.org. We don't need the other ones, I don't think, but I'm going to leave it just in case. So now we should have all the things we need. And based on that, we should just run. First, thing, we'll, we'll get rid of this. We're not running two instances of the software. We run the standalone. We should get some music almost immediately. Well, after this loading splash screen. <laughs> Smug mode. So there you go. That is how you add music into your title screen. And based on the fact it's all just lower commands, if you go into the about, you can change the music. You can go back in. You can go and start the game. So remember the title underscore exit, and we did stop global sound. That's why it stopped when you went into the about, and it stopped when it went into loading, and it's certainly stopped when you're playing your game. So we found our hill, we run across the path, we run into this pond, and we win the game. And you go back to the title screen, and there's your title screen music. So there you go. It's as simple and as easy as that. So now we've got less than 10 minutes left, so now I can show you the bit I want to show you. So hopefully that was cool. Uh, go back into Steam uh, Game Guru 1.131. And all the stuff I've been working on is in here because I want the, the next thing I'm going to release isn't going to be an update. It's going to be something else. But you'll find out in a couple of mm, days or weeks. <laughs> Not more than two weeks, I hope. Uh, best way to show is just to show. So go into Entities. You'll notice there's a new folder here called classics. Let me just close these down for you. Now a lot of these are duplicated in the um, in the mega packs one, two and three. I'm going to remove any assets that have been duplicated but essentially what this classics folder is it's all the assets that have been scraped together by myself and my helpers and the community from the old FPS creator classic media archives. That means if there's been anything that existed prior to Game Guru in FPSE Classic Land, if it has been converted to some degree, we have dragged it into this new folder, Classics. So expect to see this soon. And the bit I spent 25 hours on is the Characters folder. Now, this is about 130 new characters that you're going to get. Um, <laughs> and they all needed scripts. 130 characters and they all needed scripts because they all have slightly different animations. That's what took so much time. So these are the um, the original one of the original classic um, character packs that we had years ago. So they all work. 
so you've got you know guys and girls, a couple of zombies thrown in. Then you've got Egyptians. So you've got Anubis, Cleopatra, Giza guards, neck hep mummies, and you've even got pharaohs. You've got freaks like Axe Brute. You've even got a brand new one called El Humungo, which uh, was one of the last models that Matt Blosser gave me, which is absolutely awesome. I'm going to show you that one right now. Look at the size of this guy. That's him, that's me. I'm going to make sure that I can defend myself, so I'm just going to give myself an Uzi and lots of ammo and even more health. And I'm going to save that under, say, Lee Test. But before I do that, I'm just going to go back continue my little tour. Um, you've got a half dog, half man. You've got Dante Beasts. Then you've got uh, uh, Midden Gear, which is um, ancient version of the pronunciation for Middle Earth because I'd already used Medieval and other variations so I needed another name for this category so you see you've got Crusaders and you've got um, Dwarves and Igons and Fear Gals and Night Elves and all these kind of cool things you've also got Sci-Fi so you've got a robot you've got um, sort of a lady future adventurer and a, a, a guy future adventurer that's again from the old classic days. The Viral Outbreak, which includes the Decayed, the Grendels, the Jaws, the Medusa Monster. That's a pretty cool one. It starts off lying on the ground and when you get close to it, it actually does horrible things. Uh, let me just move this. Uh, uh, so, yeah. Okay, so where was I? Oh, yeah. And then you go into the last one, which is Zombie Apocalypse. So then you've got lots of zombies. Now, these zombies are quite sophisticated. There was some feedback on... Um, what was the gas mask one? He's pretty cool. So I'll put in the gas mask guy in here. And maybe set up a, a waypoint. So we can walk backwards and forwards. And another waypoint. So this humunculus can... Maybe that one goes there, and then that one can go all the way there. And then we'll need to set that back a bit so I don't interfere. Save that. And that's it. Now, that might not seem like, oh, well, that's not very much, but there's a lot of scripts gone into these. And, just, and, and of course, these as well, which are the standard ones way back at the beginning of time. Now, if I show you the scripts that are created for them, these are them. So 27 scripts and each one has different behaviours based on the animations that were provided. Not comprehensive behaviours. Um, if I just give you a quick look at the, um, the Hell Humongo, which is the one I'd really like to work on. Look at all the things this, this character can do. It can pwn, smash, stomp, it can look around, it can waggle its jaw, it can roar, it can rage, it can fall, it can fall to its knee, it can get back up again. It can be hurt, it can die, it can bull charge, it can smash against walls, it can throw things, and it can creep up on you. Quite a lot of animations. But you'll notice in here, I'm only really doing um, one attack, one raw, one hurt animation. And then inside here you can see I've got one, two, three different kinds of attack. And you can walk and run. So that's the extent of the... Uh, behaviors for this script or oh, and also has a, a custom animation for the death sequence and you can see the potential is we can just add all these into this script so it becomes a very sophisticated character but it would literally take about two three days to do justice to these awesome animations and I don't think you want me spending three days on one character I think maybe someone else can try that in the community or if I literally run out of things to do on AI and this is what you want to see then I'm sure you're going to feed that back to me and I will add more of these behaviours into the script. So without further ado, let's have a look at what we've got. So we're going to start somewhere away and then da 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 So he's going to follow his waypoint. You've got the zombie over there who's following his waypoint. And you've got this sort of what looks like some uh, weeds on the floor, but actually that's a creature. That's gonna when I get close to it, it's gonna resurrect. 
So let's keep away from that guy for now. Let's look at our zombie. Hello, zombie. So he sees me, he yawns, and then he starts lumbling along. If I shoot him once, <laughs> and then he continues. He also has a, a run if I really annoy him. Um, but look what happens if I shoot his leg. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> He has a death sequence for whether he shoots his left leg, his right leg, his left arm, his right arm, his chest, or his head. He has like about 12 different death animations. Now this, this thing, watch what happens. So he doesn't like being woke up. And I get smashed and I can shoot him in the head. And then he has this really long death throw. Um, it would be nice if I can get some sound uh, engineer for help me out with adding very specific sounds for all these characters. But again, it wasn't really about spending days on a single character. It was about getting all the media in, putting it in front of you, so then you can take it the rest of the way if you want to for your own particular games. The animations are done. You just need to tie it in with the script. Now this is our uh, El Humongo. As you can see it's, it's pretty monstrous. I can shoot him in the belly. It doesn't like that. <laughs> like it. Then he starts running a lot faster, and uh, give me a, a bash. Now, looks nice enough, but can we stop him. Let him walk. 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 There he is. He's walking now. What I can do is set shadows on, ambient stone, thingy up, blah blah blah, lots of specular. And all of a sudden, look, it looks a lot nicer now. It's got shadows, it's got softs, obstruction, and all these kind of cool things. So, really nice looking character. Maybe set some nice sky. And maybe a better terrain. Ooh, lava. <laughs> yes. So, and then when we, sh we properly kill him, doesn't like that. Then he doesn't like that at all, and he's. Uh, and <laughs> so there's uh, El Humongo, poor little sod. Uh, like I said, lots of animations for this guy as well. Uh, these are just the ones that I started with, and also you can imagine the opportunities for more sound effects or so camera shakes and sounds when it hits the floor again, beyond the scope of what I was hoping to do. But you get the sort of idea. So now you've got scripts for every single legacy character that have been left out in the cold. If there's any more, then you know you can feed that and I'll add it to this particular classics folder. And in addition to that, there's all the other stuff that you would have found. Like um, a lot of these are in, in mega packs, but there's some that isn't, like the, the dungeon stuff, a lot of gory things, uh, like the. Uh, <laughs> This one, which is a bit gory, but you can see the uh, chainsaw brute is now impaled on a iron spike. You've got Metro Theatre graphics, so you can create your own cinemas. Post-apocalyptic stuff with lots of furniture and items and a lot of stuff in there. <laughs> and then you got the World War II stuff that you probably didn't find um, in Game Guru up until like now. And then Wild West and some more weapons. I'll get those working, so you'll have three new weapons, and these are probably duplicated in the in the in the mega pack. So I'm going to write a little program which scans the thumbnails, and if there's anything that matches, it removes them from this. So you only get things in here that aren't in the mega packs one, two, and three. So that's what I've been working on, and just to feed that in, and I'm I'm going over the 30 minutes slightly, but I just want to show you why I'm mentioning this. This is the lower side um, for El Humongo. So you can see you've got all these different frames of animation and down in the init I'm actually taking these values. These are just comments. These won't affect this script. But I'm taking the attack script, the start and the end, and within the attack which frames of animation do the damage. The raw, so when he the frame starts and end for when he actually does his raw, and if you actually shoot him, what animation do you use for that sort of flinch when he actually flinches back because you've actually shot it? And then further down, you can see that there's duplicate and different variations of attack, and then the damage frames for that. 
And so, and then there's this at the end, which is the animation for uh, the death animation. So 2100, if you go back to the top, you see that 2100 is this one. 2100, So that's where that's from. But here's the other thing. This is the interesting thing. Now let's go to the entity bank and classics and characters, freaks, and then El Humongo, which is the FPE, which was also asked in the post. You can see it's tied to that script that we're just looking at there. And you've got these other things like sound set, which is defining the character um, type. There's a, there's a folder in Audio Bank called characters. And inside there, there's one called classics. And inside there is all the things like the, the alert, the aggro, when you get hurt, the death and it, uh, sounds and all that. So a lot of sounds all crammed into that one genre. And then you can just play it in the script. Uh, I've left this one open so you can change the sound that the character makes when he first sees you. That's just one we've provided by default, but you can change that to whatever you want. But getting specifically onto the animations, the CSI stuff, that's all this. Now, if I refer you to this, you notice the idle is at 42470. Well, here, I'm setting 42470. That's the frame that's going to be used when you're in the editor. So when you drop the character down, that's the animation you see. That one's there. And this has to be right. It has to be 100, that has to be 1, that has to be a frame start and end, and that has to be 1. 1 as in, you're actually going to play the first 1. If you had anim 0 and anim 1 and anim 2, then it would be whatever it is that plays in the editor. But you notice also 42470, 42470, so on and so forth. And populating all the different scenarios that the built-in animation system could come up with um, and filling it in with the idle animation because there's only one idle animation for El Humongo. So one, two, three, four. Unarmed, cautious, and relaxed all use the same idle. For this one, three, one, or two, those are walking. So if we look for three, one, or two, which is down here, that's a walk slower animation, which I'm using in relaxed. I'm using it for cautious. I'm using it if you're unarmed. I'm also using it if you're. Um, if your script is trying to arm you but there's no weapon held, it will try and use the stud move forward. And if you actually try and walk backwards in the script, it will try and use these animations. So I'm just putting all these as the slow movement forward walking animation. Just in case, if you add something to your script which forces this particular event in the internal animation subsystem, it actually has the correct frames of animation to, to play out. Now, this one, move run, we wanted a faster one. Now, there is no run for El Humongo because it's a massive git. So, the fastest walk we've got is that one, walk 1001 to 1091. So, that's been pasted in there. But there's also places for the run animation. So, if you accidentally did sort of set character armed, then it will try and use these frames of animation. So, again, we put run, 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 or rather the fast walk in there. And the last thing that's worth mentioning and actually tripped me up for a while is this. If you've got a character that has an interesting bone structure that isn't compatible with the ragdoll system, you're going to have this problem where the character just seems to be stood up. The typical test is if you fire a rocket at a character that doesn't have a ragdoll hierarchy, you need to perform an actual animation. Now, in the classic FPC classic models, that fall animation was from 0 to 20. Now, in the CSI, when you're actually putting the stuff in, don't put 0, 20. If it starts with a 0, it will ignore it, and it will replace it with an override for the new Game Guru animation sets, which is no use to you if you've got a custom animation. So make sure that any time you put an override value in here, all these are overrides. If it's blank, it uses the default the Game Guru Uber animation set. But if you put something in here, you override that with your own animation frames. Just make sure it doesn't start with zero, it has to be one or above. And that way you'll uh, um, ensure that you're overriding it. And for these, if you don't have a ragdoll, it has to use animation and the subsystem will use the unarmed death if there's no specific direction that the damage came from, like you, got, you poisoned the character, it would just collapse. If you've hit it um, in the back of the head, then it has to fall forward. 
if you hit it the front of the head it falls backwards and similarly for left and right and because the humongo didn't have specific left right forward and backward fall death animations they're all using 21 or to 2316 which if you look for that um, is there it is death 21 or 2316 which is for those and those are the only things I needed to override for that entire character. You could populate the rest, but really, unless your script is triggering these kinds of things, you won't need them. Those are the only ones you need. So when you get your hands on the elmongo.fpe, it's a really great example of how to get all the animations you want um, into the FPE, which basically controls your idle, your walking, your running, your death animation, and maybe some strafing. And then for the script, that's everything else. That's your attacking, your uh, roaring, your hurting, and anything else that you want to play within your uh, specific character script. So, without further ado, I'm just going to demonstrate that again because it's so cool. Get rid of the zombie, get rid of the. No, actually, not. We'll get rid of him. We'll put lots of him down. And then we will delete that and we'll run it again. Just so you can see El Humongo in all its glory. And if you want to see him completely kicked it out with all his animations, and you want me to put on hold all the other features, just let me know and I'll see what I can do. <laughs> he wants to crush me. I'll show you his attacks. Bang! That's a big double fist. That's one fist. He also got... Um, he's got a foot. He actually does a Monty Python on you. I'll let him hit me. I've got 10,000 health. He's, he's, he's not doing me much damage. There he is. Bang! <laughs> so he can squash you. I think I hit him in the head. No, what I actually did with this one... El Humongo is the only character in the, the, the new characters where he can do a headshot because he's just too thick skulled. But he does that turn away sort of every time you shoot him. Now that was just one animation, hurt, start and end. You could choose lots of different sort of reaction ones from various pieces of this animation. So it can react in 5 or 7 or 10 or 12 different ways. It's entirely up to you, it's all about the script. Yeah. You see, he's not really used to someone with an Uzi. He's expecting me to attack him with a sword or a club or something, so... It's a bit of an uneven match. Tell you what, that look... <laughs> That lava looking at it from up on high doesn't look particularly attractive. Let's go for desert. Let's go for some desert. A bit better. And we'll save that out. And uh, that. Oh, look, at, we're over 40 minutes in. So much for my 30 minutes. So you're going to go to the live chat, see if there's any questions, see if anyone uh, has any uh, more things they want to see in and around this subject. Uh, da 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 da. VRG, where can you download these characters? They are great. Um, watch this space. I'll be doing a dev blog before the end of the week which describes what these are, how you're going to get them, when they're going to... But you are going to get them. Don't worry about it. They are coming to you soonish. So they're in my uh, computer at the moment. No one has them except me. Because, like I said, I've just spent 25 hours creating the scripts for them. That's what brought them to life. Um, Nathan 38 says he thinks it's in the next update. Yes. It's in the next update. Um, but, 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 Synchro Mesh 62, next person on Steam that says, not enough assets, I'm going to ban. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of those things. Um, it doesn't matter how hard you try, you'll always get someone goes on Steam, does a negative review, they've used it for 20 minutes and says, don't use this, get Unity, it's free. If you actually look at how many assets we have right now, I mean, I'll count out the default ones, right? Now, including, and this is just the core, plus these expansion ones, you're looking at somewhere between 7 to 8 gigabytes, gigabytes that is, that is 8,000 megabytes of game assets. That's low poly, textured, animated, scripted, ready to use assets for your game. Right? Now you add even a tiny fraction of that up and then go somewhere else and use an engine or write your own game engine from scratch and then source those assets and see how far you get. So it's a really unfair level to say 
or get Unity on Real, it's free. Don't get Game Guru because it's twenty dollars. It, it's it's a it's a crazy comparison when you look at the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of assets that you get in the stock version, and then with the addition of the classics and another 130 very cool characters with very sophisticated scripts, and I might add the best scripts yet. I never make a worse script. Every time I go back to do some scripts, it gets better and better. Like I said, these zombies have about 14 different death animations. So if you have all these zombies in a scene and then machine gun them all, they all fall in different ways. Plus, they don't stick on each other. They actually walk straight past the fallen zombie and then carry an attack in. So it's a lot better. These zombies are a thousand times better than the zombies you'll find in the character's zombies folder. Which is, again, more characters that are available in the stock version. <laughs> so, there it is. That is lots of assets waiting for you in the not-too-distant future. And, of course, once you get your hands on them, you can start breaking my scripts apart and adding all those extra animations that uh, I haven't bothered to do because, I said, it's a beyond the scope. If I just close all this down now, and that one too, I just want to show you all of it. So I'll just kind of step... No, I have to do that, don't I? Yeah. Okay. So this is the uh, the pincher animations, you see. I've actually listed out all the animation frames and the descriptions of what they do. So that's Furrow. These are the, um, um, the Medusa character. Lobotomy, that's Jaws. That's Isis. That's Grendel. So you see there's lots of stuff I may not have put into the script, but you can check these, these extra frames out. That's a biggie, El Humongo, as you've seen before. Where else will be going? We've got an elf. We've got uh, Dahor, which is that, uh, that dwarf-looking character. You've got lots of extra animations for the Decade. And Dante also has a lot. And uh, let me just scroll through. I think there's a couple of ones with some extra ones. Here's one. The Chainsaw Brute. I don't know if I showed you that. I'm going to show you that. <laughs> Yes, I know it's only supposed to be 30 minutes. Well, tough. Chainsaw Brute 1. Let's pop him in here, delete that. You can move to this waypoint. We don't need that anymore, so delete, delete, delete. Gone. Save. Watch this guy, it's pretty cool. And this guy, I think, is using clever use of sounds, so you can check out the script when you see it. Now, this guy, is, at the moment, is just um, patrolling his waypoint as I get closer to him. Watch. <laughs> He's actually got a working chainsaw, and he has to actually start it before he starts attacking you with it. So I've actually put that in, but only up to here. If you want to have a play around with this particular one, there's a whole series of animations where you can steal the chainsaw off him and chop his head off. <laughs> so if that's something you want me to finish off with this script, then let me know after version 1.14. So uh, this Apocalypse one, these are the zombies. These are the Zombie Apocalypse 2 zombies. Look how many animations there are. All these are death animations. You've got animations where he's crawling along the floor. And he can attack you from a crawling position um, and in different hit positions. And he can bounce back up off the floor and many, many different idle ones. So you can add those to your scripts. Anubis Unarmed. Ugh, look at all these. These are all the ones from the original classic set. So um, you see from here the if, with, with Pistol. That allows you to use this script with a very small modification to the FPE, i.e. adding, say, a weapon to the FPE. And then you can make sure that when you do set character armed, it actually uses these instead. And now you wouldn't use these. These are just comments. What you'd actually have to do is copy the appropriate start and end frames into the FPE CSI underscore fields. So, as, as I've discussed previously, that's how you would tie it all together. But I've documented them all here, so you don't have to kind of go through the view animation script and then step through every frame. These have already been verified by the artist, so they loop seamlessly if they needed to loop. So, Spiker has uh, some extra animations, and Satire has a 
the standard set of animations for those um, Middle Earth characters. And so that's a really great place if you want to take the scripts and take it further, those are the animations for it. So um, you'll have a lot of fun and you'll spend many, many hours uh, playing around with those animations on the scripts and the FPE. And then send me your improved versions of those characters. You know, I'd, I'd love to be surprised. And if you give me permission, I'll drop them into the next version so everyone else in the community can enjoy that. So I'm just looking at the clock, uh, well past the appointed half hour, but I'm just going to answer any questions. I think that's only for. I'll stop at 30 minutes or I'll stop at an hour. I don't really stop in between. So let me have a look. Um, wow, a lot of <laughs> a lot of stuff just poured in at the last minute or uh, whilst I was talking over the last 17, 15 minutes. Uh, Synchromesh GG has more assets free than any other engine on Steam already. Yes, absolutely. I think we can uh, probably change the product page on Steam and actually make that bold claim. Undisputed game engine with the most assets for the cheapest price ever. Uh, uh, Crypt Weaver, honestly, I think this update is by far the best. These characters will hit home folks making every kind of game. Yeah, uh, it's been requested quite a while. We need more characters, we need more characters. We did the character creator and you can, you can use that to, up to a point. But you really wanted sort of more breadth. You needed lots of different kinds of characters and hopefully this lets you make lots more kinds of games. I'm sure there'll still be requests for characters but at least we've taken the sting out of that request. Um, and Nathan L38 to be fair, Game Guru might not be free but the value for money is incredible plus if I'm not mistaken, to publish our games commercially with Unity, you have to pay a monthly fee. Um, it's free to publish, um, but as soon as you make more than, I think, $100,000 or something, then you have to upgrade to the Pro license, which I believe they've moved to a subscription model now, so you have to keep paying a subscription for at least a year or two years before you actually own it. And I think you only own it if you actually subscribe to the big expensive one, which is like about $30, $40 a month. So for the price of one month of Unity, you get all of Game Guru with lifetime updates. So it really is good value for money. Uh, sales pitch over, guys. Um, so, uh, Bellidos1, very true. I bet Paul Lee gets frustrated trying to explain. I'm sure he's talked about multiple times. Yeah, uh, I don't mind keep repeating myself, you know, my brain's like cheese, so I probably forget the, half the things I say, so I'm often repeating myself. I see it as value for money. Maybe my challenge is to try and communicate what Game Guru can offer as easily and as quickly and as upfront as possible. Maybe I'm not doing that as well as I could do. So really, it's on me for people to get the wrong impression. I'm not giving them the right information. So it is my responsibility to correct that. I just haven't figured out a way exactly how to, to communicate that within the 15 minutes that people give Game Guru before they stop using it and then give it an egg. Uh, okay, last question. There's a question mark from Crypt Weaver. Can we see some of the fantasy characters in action? Well, you do have less than 10 minutes, so I don't see why not. Let's delete Mr. Chainsaw. Let's save. It reloads, removes the chainsaw guy from the selection. We go to Fantasy. I suppose you mean Middle Geared. So what would be a really cool one to show you? Well, the I um, Gom is a nice big character. And also the Crusader, he's pretty cool. And who else can I show you? Oh, um, how about the Royal Elf? Now, when you see Unarmed, that just means they're like peasants, the civilians. They won't try and attack. They just walk up and down and then they stop and look at you when you get too close. So I've put them in. I'll save. I'll run. I know it seems odd carrying around an Uzi when you're going up against these sort of mythical characters. Uh, those are all... Uh, always make sure that when you're um, doing tests like this, set your shadow to full, set terrain and density to highest, maybe nudge up bloom a little bit, Make sure ambience is a bit low and surface is a little high. That way your shadows can be stronger. And make sure that your specular is quite high just for shiny things. So um, let me show you. Keep away from that one for now. The Gorn wants to attack. 
So he's going to run at me and he's going to club me over the head. <coughs> Thanks very much. But look, this is just an unarmed, so I'm not being attacked. It's just uh, as soon as I walk away, carry on. As soon as I walk close, keep an eye on me. And here's the gone. He has a walk and a run. So <coughs> he also has a, a reaction, so if I shoot him, <coughs> see, he stumbles back and then he thinks, right, I'm going to club you over the head. So I'm going to get whacked. <coughs> I think I can do a headshot with this guy. There you go. And he's gone. And you can also shoot civilians. Go past the uh, wall of skewers. And there's a knight. And a knight can uh, do two different attacks. He's got a stab. Uh, and he's got that sweep. That sweep as well. And again, you can he'll react when you shoot. As you can see, were I to spend another couple of weeks, I would actually get lots of really cool sounds, like a different sound for every single character. But then you go into the realms of the double, triple A production lines, and you want me working on EBE and AI and stuff like that, not sounds for every single action of every single character. And now there's 500 characters. How long do you think that's going to take? So those are the uh, Middle Earth stuff, and you can find a lot more in a couple of weeks or days or months. Not months, sorry. <laughs> Not more than three weeks. I want to get it out to you guys as soon as I've tested them and it's solid. Uh, I've got six minutes left and uh, the chat has just populated with some more stuff. So... Some people to hear it over and over, like myself. Yeah, uh, a lot of the sound effects are the same. I'll just quickly show you the sounds... Again, these are areas that we can improve on if you want to vote for these over time. You've got the character. These are all the classic ones. So there's four sets. And you just plug each of these genres in and then all the sound effects for that particular. That's a classic male. That's a classic female. That's a classic undead like a monster. That's the chainsaw guy, which the pull cord is actually in the aggro. Just for a cheat. But you can actually, you, you know, you don't actually have to have an aggro but you can actually specify that when you're playing the uh, the sound set. So there's clever things you can do. So check out the chainsaw if you want to have more sounds than you, you think you can have for characters. And the other place is the classics. And then he, these are all the sounds that I've currently got now. I might spend some more time. Predominantly, they're all drawing from this one and this one. And and this one, a little bit from this one. But the Bond one, which is all these really cool Dante and Dogman and Lobotomy sounds, and the Viral Outbreak sounds, and the Zombie Apocalypse 1 and 2 sounds, those aren't hooked in yet. I can leave them in the expansion pack so you can find them and hook them up yourself. But if I have more time, if I give myself more time, then I'll make sure that every single one of these sound effects is tied in at some level to the characters that have been prepared in the classics characters area so you don't really have to fart about you can just have it by just dropping it in and it instantly works so that's the sound side of things so I think we've done a pretty much coverage on everything that I've been tr attempting to do over the last day and a half and I've got a few more tweaks to do I've got to eliminate all the assets that have been duplicated from the mega packs and then do a whole big level which tests every single asset to make sure it's all solid. And then once that's done, then I can do a dev blog and talk to you a little bit more about how it's going to be released. Um, which I think you'll like because it solves some other issues that have been reported about humongous Steam downloads and how to get around these sorts of things. But more on that later. So I'm looking at the clock. I think I will sneak off a little bit early. It's a couple of minutes to go, but I think I've pretty much covered everything I wanted to talk about. But the news of the day is there's now about 125 new characters coming your way, so look out for that. Complete with scripts and sounds and cool animations and lots of potential for expansion in the future. So until I speak to you again, I think if I click that, go back to the home page, which is very nice. We're probably going to update the web page as well. I mean, a lot of these screenshots are from well over a year ago, and we've seen much more cooler stock graphics and media since then. So I think we're due an overhaul. 
and maybe again that addresses some of the issues people might have about you know what are you getting with game guru what do you get for your twenty dollars well seven gigabytes of game assets is that for starters so until i think it's going to be next wednesday so if it is until next wednesday i shall say goodbye i hope you've enjoyed it if you don't get this live you'll get it on youtube as with all the other broadcasts if you don't know where they are just go to help tutorials game guru development broadcast and they all live here so this one will be up in the next hour or two so until next week i hope you enjoyed it i shall say from me lee bamba and game guru goodbye <laughs>